So I'd like to introduce Jenny. She'll tell you more about her project. But um, I just wanted to say we really excited the um, the panel when we read her application. It was just it was another example of really um, clever way of engaging students, flipping the classroom, getting them involved, and some really creative pedagogies going. So I'm really looking forward to being able to show us what she did. So thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Okay, so uh, as Charlotte just introduced, my name is Jenny Degani. I'm from uh, Duke University, uh, North Carolina. Uh, how many of you are familiar with um, North Carolina here? Where are you from? Uh, I grew up in West Virginia, but I okay, spent a lot yeah. of time in the Outer Banks. Yeah, right, right. So um, I'm uh, originally from South Korea, so, um, but I'm, you know, pretty much I live here, you know, good part of um, my life. So. Um, uh, before I get started, um, why don't we introduce each other? I don't like this kind of cold atmosphere, so uh, why don't you just introduce yourself, just your name, where you're from, um, what do you do? You know, as a teacher or a supporter, or if you can, you know. Hi, I'm Sarah Corporal, I'm from Wake Forest, and I do instructional design. Okay. Wake Forest? <coughs> oh, we're neighbors. Like store. <laughs> neighbors, yeah, okay, great, okay. Max Stewart from Wellesley College, I'm an instructional technologist, okay. support SICAD. Oh, great, great. I'm Diane Cross from the University of Nottingham in the UK, and I'm on the third day in class of the Okay, great. My name is Aaron Holt, I'm from the Zurich team, and I'm from the Netherlands. Okay, welcome. I'm Kalitua, I'm from Kalitua, I'm product manager of Kalitua. Okay. Okay. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, my name is Yi. Sorry, I'm from Shanghai. Okay. Yes, to meet you. Everybody. I'm uh, I'm Jenny. I come from Beijing University, uh, post and telecommunication. Now okay. I visit the Mercer College. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm teacher. Teacher? Yeah. Professor. Okay. Um, I'm a Louisa Lee. I'm from Maris College. I'm an instructional designer. Okay. Yeah, we need well, many instructional designers <laughs> as a faculty member, so thank you for coming. Hello, I'm Andrew Green from NYU. I uh, work with the Faculty of Arts and Science uh, as an educational technology specialist. Okay. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dorothy. I'm a uh, daughter, <laughs> and I recently <laughs> graduated from uh, UNC Chapel Hill. Welcome. Thank you for coming. <laughs> I'm Cheryl from the University of Cape Town, and I'm a teacher. A teacher? Okay, great. I'm Patrick. I'm from Texas State University. Okay. I'm the assistant director of our instructional design. Okay. Thank you. I'm Stephen Marquardt from the University of Cape Town, and I look after the team that runs our Sky, Cast, and Zerti, and other educational technology systems. Okay, thank you. I'm David Rousseau from the University of Rhode Island, an educational uh, technology specialist. Okay. All right. Wow. There are a lot of uh, uh, technique, uh, education technology specialists here. So hopefully, what I talk is not the, <laughs> the low level. So as I said, I'm a teacher. I'm a professor. But my background is a little unique in that um, I've been a nurse for uh, over 25 years. Um, but I have a dual degree, a PhD in um, educational technology management, and then. Uh, Doctor of Nursing Practice um, in Nursing. So I think my interest um, is, is this um, dual uh, degrees can kind of come together to um, do a more innovative um, pedagogy um, uh, teaching and learning. So this is a little different. So I'll have to hold this one and then do it. So uh, uh, today, my talk is about, uh, we're going to talk about pros and cons of uh, text based online discussions. We do a lot of text-based online discussions um, in, um, in our program, so we're going to talk about that. And also to review the background of the course and reasons for redesign, why I should re redesign my course. And to describe the use of uh, media-based discussions with Blockwire. I'm not sure how, much, uh, how many of you are familiar with Blockwire, but I'm going to introduce a brief way that I use for my um, redesign. And also to, di uh, to discover practical strategies to integrate log wire into peer review um, applications. So uh, that's um, okay. so 
you know, I'm a teacher, so always I'm, you know, promote, uh, I promote active learning. So you're probably familiar with the thing, pair, share, you know what it is? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make it work, okay? So um, think about what are some pros and cons of text-based discussion forums. You know what, the, you know that when we, when students come to online, uh, online learning environment and teachers give assignments, okay, these are discussion uh, topics and okay, you have to type and you have to answer each other, responses each other. So this is, th these are the text-based um, uh, applications. Think about what are some pros, what good advantages, and disadvantage of this pedagogy. I'll, I'll give you one minute to think about and pair up any, any friends, you know, to share your thoughts, and we're gonna just briefly review that. Just for one minute, two minutes, okay? Yeah, if you already thought of it, you can just... <laughs> Okay, time's up. I'm sorry to cut you up, but um, okay. So, uh, who would like to share some pros, just one or two? What was the uh, good things about uh, discussion forums, text based discussion forums? Yeah. You can keep a record of the discussion. Right. Go back to it. Okay. Anything else? I mean, <coughs> you're familiar with text in the forums, right? Mm -hmm. What would be good? Yeah. Uh, for someone who may have uh, slight attention deficit, it may be good to go back to Re yeah. to review. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Cheryl brought up a really good point that students who maybe speak multiple languages, mm -hmm. maybe they're not um, working academically in their first language, it mm -hmm. gives them more time to sort of reflect on the message. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So you're right. So some pros in the literature says, well, it's flexible. Probably we thought of it because you don't have to be in, in a, at the same time to to respond, or it's just asynchronous and it's good and it's flexible and. As we said, is the thing before posting, so that's kind of reflection, that's everything, <coughs> and review and reflect, and everyone has a chance to participate, right? So that's some pros. What about some cons? You know, what would be some disadvantages for that? Uh, it becomes very boring very quickly. Right, yeah. And you have to type a lot. Yeah, type <laughs> a lot, yes. <laughs> I think that it creates distance between people. Right. So, Right, we miss a lot of non-verbal cues, so yeah, mm -hmm. both visual mm -hmm. connection. Right, connection. Yep. Um, it's difficult for faculty to review to provide feedback, targeted feedback. Right. You have a long conversation. A lot of over. right. I mean, I was <gasps> so tired to read. Sometimes, like a due date, you know, less like there's a due date like eleven fifty-five. Last night, the next morning, I have like 70 posts, you know, like because they're all at the same time to post their responses. It's just so overwhelming, right? So, so they, and of course, and there are some redundancies of posting because students not necessarily know what they post already, right? They prepare by, by themselves and they post the same thing, answers and over and over, and it gets boring. And um, 
there are some dominant discussants, you know, like always their their voice is so loud and they talk and they are very opinionated and some are very passive. And so there's some unbalance in, in the um, 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 learning environment. And as I said, overwhelming number of posts and heavy writing, lack of personality. We don't know who they are and it's just <clears throat> one dimension. So it, it gets a little, you know, um, it's passive learning environment. So because of that, I thought, I mean, I need to put some, I wanted to put some dimensions in the uh, in learning environments. That's when I started, okay, I want to do some uh, um, evaluation and see how they feel about these discussion forums. And so when I did some midterm um, um, survey, uh, there was some a good amount, I mean, this FL is a fall semester, 2014 fall semester. Throughout the year, I did, I mean, I kept some uh, feedback from students ongoing. It's just voluntary. I mean, it's anonymous. I kept, you know, uh, gathering um, some information from students. And with that, um, some students said it, it was good. I mean, uh, they, they liked, they liked the discussion forums. Um, they, they can uh, share different perspectives and, um, you know, that always I have, sometimes I have 50 students <coughs> and in all one uh, two sessions, um, um, then what I did is I divided a small uh, group, like five in each group, so ten groups. So I kept a very small size. So they like this a small size, but sometimes uh, when they when we introduce ourselves, I have to use a lot of um, the big comp a big um, discussion forum. Then they was kind of overwhelming, but they like the, the small size. And also the reflection reflect. They like to think before they post, so they like that a part. So. Uh, but on the other hand, they say, well, you know, it's too much. It's just, it's, it's very superficial. I don't feel like I'm engaging in a, a true dis uh, dialogue. <coughs> and another thing is some students felt like, um, um, I, I felt like very um, attacked. You know, I feel like I couldn't talk about what my opinion because there's some uh, students attacking me. And it was so interesting because my uh, research area is the cyber civility. So it was like, Okay, so it, it, is it really safe learning environment? You know, some students feel it's kind of unsafe to talk about their opinion. So that was another, um, um, uh, the other side of the story. And also, um, they they felt it was not really interactive. So there are some pros and cons <laughs> from my students. So I gathered that, and um, the first semester, 2014 fall, uh, we did some um, the course improvement um, um, survey. And how much does participate in the weekly online discussion for help your learning? And as you can see, um, the quite good number of students said, you know, it's helpful. Okay, but that was not enough for me to, you know, the, uh, to improve my course. So uh, in the future, if the uh, following changes were made to the course, how much would it help you learn? So we asked this increased use of new technology. And as you can see, I mean, many students said, Majority of students said, "Okay, I mean, increase. Please use, uh, please uh, use more technology." On the other hand, they said, "Well, we don't like oral presentations." So I thought, "Okay, I need to. I mean, we, you guys want want us to um, use more technology, but in you know, online learning environment, um, so you know, to me, it's like a visual audio. You know, in online learning environment, to use more technology, but they say they don't like um, oral presentations. So, okay." So that was kind of conflict information for me. But as I reached out to, uh, uh, before I did it actually, I thought of it, um, this um, sections uh, analysis framework. Uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with this. Whenever I, uh, I um, uh, think of integrating new technology into uh, my teaching, um, this is very easy to remember sections. Um, I have to think about students. Who are my uh, population? Who are my a target audience. So who is my target audience? So I have to think about students. And is it easy to use? I mean, if it's so difficult to uh, difficult for uh, students to use, I mean, that we we, uh, we kill we, we kill uh, the purpose. So uh, that's E. And cost structure. If we, I have to pay a lot to inter, uh, integrate with technology, that would be it would be um, feasible. So that was another consideration. And, and also, is, is this new technology improving teaching and learning, enhancing uh, teaching and learning, and also interactivity? And uh, what about organizational support? Is really uh, support, uh, organizationally speaking, 
they're going to support my innovation. That was another thing. And novelty. These days, students are um, digital um, natives, and if it's too easy for them to, it's, it's not really um, um, promote. I mean, um, it's new. It's not novel. They're not going to be um, engaged in that um, uh, learning either. So, and speed. Is it easy? I mean, is it quick enough to implement? So these are very easy to remember. So I use this uh, framework a lot whenever I think of choose a new technology. So um, I reached out to Heianzu, who is um, uh, Duke's uh, Center for Instructional uh, Technology Center, and she is an academic consultant for, uh, for uh, health sciences. So I asked her, OK, we're using Sakai, and is there any tool that I can use to um, you know, to promote enhanced students' learning, and she introduced um, uh, the lock wire. So you put that. Um, what I like to do is, I think many of you are not familiar with lock wire. How many of you are familiar with lock wire? Okay, one. So I think in this video, I'm going to explain what lock wire is. This is my introduction. It's just seven minutes, uh, so uh, it, it will give you what I teach. You know, it's a population health in, in a global society, and this is seven minute intro, uh, introduction uh, video for all my students. Each semester, I re record uh, and give some um, um, the overview of the course. Also, what learning <coughs> environment looks like. So uh, I'll give uh, I'll play this one, and after that, I'll talk about what. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Jenny Dugani, Assistant Professor here at the Duke University School of Nursing. My last name may be challenging to pronounce, so if Dugani is difficult to pronounce or spell, you can call me Dr. D. First, let me welcome you to N582 Population Health in a Global Society. As you can infer from the title of the First, N582 focuses on population health in a global context in today's increasingly globalized world with contemporary issues and concerns of different populations. Before I go deeper in the course synopsis, I'd like to make clear that this course is neither of global health nor of public health. <coughs> so to give you a little more information, N582 is a core or a foundational course in the master's graduate curriculum at Busan. We believe that it is important for professional nurses to assess the health of populations, base intervention decisions on evidence, use various strategies to alter determinants of health, and evaluate population health outcomes, all that by using mechanisms to empower populations and individuals to participate in the <laughs> Population-focused health care is a concept that is gaining momentum in the United States, although other countries have started supporting this type of health care much earlier. The concept of population-focused health care is being taught in many MSM programs because it is becoming more widely accepted throughout the world. Now, study last summer, APS students were particularly interested in learning the concept of population health as future nurses have been committed to take this course as their elective. Given students who didn't have a chance to learn population health in their previous coursework have been taking the course as their elective as well. I think this mixed classmates will make the course more interesting and diverse. Understandably, planning and applying health care for large groups or subgroups of a population while continuously monitoring outcomes require a team of healthcare providers, along with social and political strategies. You know in your readings that social and political strategies are referred to as upstream investments. Some of the topics we'll engage in during the semester include viewing population health from a global perspective, finding and using population health data for decision making, Identifying vulnerable populations, adopting a population health perspective, and discussing how we can impact the health of populations. So when you're ready to get started, first 
review the syllabus, which is located in our learning management system, Sakai, which recommends tips on how to be successful in this course. If you are new to Dusan and Sakai, you may want to take the tutorial to familiarize with the system. You can see the link right here. <coughs> with that, I'll give you a brief tour of our course here. Even though your screen will be a little bit different from mine, as I'm presenting it from the instructor's screen view. On the home screen, you will see the description of the course, as well as my content information. The second tab is syllabus, where you will find the syllabus, the assignment due dates, summary, and the learning circles. To make it more interesting for you, I divided the class into small learning groups, and throughout the semester, we will work in the learning circle, except for week one. The next tab is lessons, where you will find learning activities, reading materials, evaluations, and so forth. The next one is forum, where group discussions happen. Make sure you understand the conditions and requirements for the discussion assignments. Now, announcements tab, where you will find my weekly summaries and other important messages. Some of you may opt out of receiving course announcements via emails. However, all my announcements will be stored in this tab, um, so it may prove important to visit this folder regularly to see if any important message was overlooked. Uh, you will uh, take some courses and have learning activities in this course. They are linked to the tests and quizzes tab. While the assign uh, assignments tab will be used for new projects involving multimedia and show you activities, as well as some extra credit assignments. Your grade for each activity and assignments will be recorded in the grade group tab. That's where you can check on your progress regularly to make sure you are on target. The rest of the tabs or folders are self-explanatory. Uh, for example, if you encounter any technical difficulties, you want to contact Dusan IT instead of me. Now, for the week one discussion, you have an option to push your responses to Rockwire. Here is how to do so. You click the discussion forum. Click uh, Start New Conversation, unless you are responding to your peers. And find the uh, Insert Walk Wire button here, blue W icon. <coughs> Press it. Uh, let's wait a little bit. And click Add Media. And you will see two options. One, upload your files from your computer, or capture from webcam or computer. And the rest of the steps are found in the file name you know, for record a video and audio with Walkwire for discussion forum under their syllabus tab. I hope this quick tutorial will help you navigate your course room without too much difficulty. This said, my goal is simple. I want to facilitate your learning experience and provide you with occasions to discover and acquire the skills necessary to face today's complex healthcare landscape. I'm available through email, call, and if you're local, we can have an on-campus meeting. I have your success at heart, so if you need help, just ask for it. I will see you in the class. So this is very um, brief introduction to the course each um, the first week students um, um, first week students listen to this uh, introduction so at least they know what this course is about and by the way I made it <laughs> I uh, I use Camtasia and I, I, I it's very easy to use um, I don't have to ask um, a, you know technology techn technician to you know help me on that just one night I just um, recorded it and students like the fact that they can really look at the whole of the um, classroom you know the learning management system it really reduces my uh, workload because um, sometimes students ask what is this for what is for but 
um, I think that gives a very good <coughs> So use of this lock wire, it's very easy to use, it's integrated uh, into, the, uh, into Sakai. Um, actually, the first semester, um, I was a pioneer to use first, so uh, there were some uh, technical issues, but with the, uh, the collaboration, uh, uh, in, in collaboration with the uh, CIT, uh, Center for Instructional Technology uh, um, uh, staff, I was uh, successfully um, able to convert some uh, discussion forums, text-based discussion forums, to um, audio-visual-based uh, um, uh, discussion <coughs> assignments. Also, I thought, um, okay, presenting it is one thing, but what about having more interactions? That's when I um, look for some other tools. Uh, peer review, peer review was, uh, is also uh, available in Sakai uh, assignment, probably you know. So I interpret those two to, in, uh, to enhance more acti activities. So that's wildfire. So these are the uh, students. What the students do is um, they, I, I put a discussion into um, assignment and students just uh, um, kind of present you know, using lock wire and I limit uh, time three to two, two to three minutes so students present it, you know, and how to do that and also guidelines and they use the same rubric that I, um, um, I'll, I'll be uh, creating their presentation so two parts will um, take, uh, take place one is peer review students four students uh, will review each uh, one um, presentation and then I review all students um, uh, peer review and see if they really understood the rubric that I presented and then if I have to override, I override, okay? So after I check all the um, uh, students' um, reviews, and then I release that, also I said, okay, now I'm going to um, uh, review your individual. So of course, it's a lot of work for faculty. So I said, oh, this is a lot of work. I mean, I have 25, 50 students, and I have to listen to all students, and I also I have to review all peer review. But I, okay, let's see how students would like. So I did um, an anonymous survey about that. So uh, actually, um, students, uh, this is a peer review process I just briefly explained, and these are the rubric that I use, um, organization, knowledge. I mean, the clear uh, rubric is very important for students to understand the assignment, so that's how it looks like. And, and uh, so as I said, it has to be very well organized. I mean, it took a, a couple of months to uh, design that. I mean, of course, a couple of months, when I say a couple of months, I, I have a day job, so I have to, you know, while I'm teaching, while, you know, this is a kind of a separate time to, to think about and um, um, organize. So careful design and, as I said, rubric, any kind of new technology, new uh, information, they want to have a clear guideline, so detailed grading rubric. And accountability. If students don't um, uh, submit their uh, initial assignment, they don't, they're not going to get the peer uh, ass uh, assignments either. So it, it has some responsibility and accountability uh, kicks in and a turnaround time. So these are there are some challenges I, um, I um, had uh, during the process. But when I had this um, uh, multimedia peer review project survey, uh, students, um, I did over two semesters, uh, 40, over 97 students, was response rate was 41, it was 
totally anonymous and voluntary. I didn't ask. I mean, there's no extra points for that anything. But of course, some students hated it. Minimum one is a hate, you know. Um, but the average was 4.35. It was very encouraging. So uh, students, and I, and also I have some um, qualitative feedback, which I'm going to uh, present to you as a video. So this is what I have, and you can hear students' voice. opportunity to further interact with our classmates and offer an array of perspective of population health issues. I like the fact that it was anonymous to reduce any pressures. The brief time requirement was an added bonus, forces us to condense and concisely present our information. The feedback opportunity was also really welcomed. Me too. It was a positive experience in that it was a new way to learn and educate others on specific topics of interest. Also, it gives practice of keeping presentation concise and to the point, so you don't lose your audience to boredom. Same here. Our new online classes and our view about it was a great learning experience. I like the ease of use on how to upload and submit videos. Additionally, the multimedia activity was a great way to summarize and talk about the assignment to other classmates. Really, no complaints from me either perhaps spacing them out, one in the early part of the semester and another towards the end. The assignments were not difficult at all to complete and ample time was provided to get it done, so regardless of when introduced, it was appropriate and enjoyable. <coughs> I wish I would be a bit more generous with the time, while I fully appreciate not having to talk into a camera more than two, three minutes. I think two to four minutes is a bit more realistic for covering essential talking points while still having time to share a bit of your own thoughts and experiences. I wouldn't go over four minutes, though. The grading rubric could be a little more specific, too. For example, several presentations I graded did not follow the time frame of two to three minutes. I was unsure whether to mark them down for a few or several minutes outside of the time frame. In the beginning, I was somewhat apprehensive when I heard about the assignment. However, it was not as difficult as I thought it would be. I felt that the multimedia project was helpful, as it allowed us to think it on the that was relevant to their present job findings. Public speaking is definitely a part of my job, so I found its assignment beneficial. Overall, I enjoyed these assignments. They allowed for the incorporation of research into an organized verbal presentation of information. I think it is good practice for real life applicable skills. I thought it was a good assignment too. It allowed a wide variety of versatility regarding any number of topic choices and may have easily related to much of the course content throughout the semester. I also like to view other students' presentation to learn others' perspective and see how everyone interpreted the assignment guidelines. So I just put the uh, students' feedback into a uh, cartoon. I, uh, I use uh, software, what was it, uh, normal? Normal? Normal. Normal, yeah, I use it. So um, just kind of interesting to present a student's voices. I put that to the time, but I did that. So uh, you, you heard uh, some good you know, the feedback, and there's some um, um, rooms for improvement. So what I did um, the, the following semester, the rubric, I made some rubric revisions to make sure that this time limit is more complex. So uh, what I did is it's too, too long or too soon, it's too vague. So I just put 30 seconds. I mean, I, have, I hate to put those kinds of, you know, I wish all students meet this, the time limits, but I put that timeline. And also um, uh, the uh, assignments before was um, uh, back to back at the end uh, because I replaced it as a final exam so they didn't have to take final exam they just do, do this T2 mini project but what I did is I just spread out the next uh, the following semester so that uh, one in a midterm and one is um, um, the final so I spread uh, I kind of split it out um, 
also because the first semester I didn't have any sample recordings, but second semester I had some good uh, sample recordings. So, so I provide those to uh, students the second semester, which students liked it. And as I said, um, oh, also I made a practice room. I didn't think about that. And I, but it was funny though, I, when I provided a practice room, nobody really used it. I don't know why, but I'm going to ask why they didn't uh, use it. But they probably didn't feel like they, they I mean, it was easy enough to use that instead of uh, using practice room. So I made some improvements. Now this semester, I'm teaching 25 students summer, in the summer. Uh, I, I I gave some students. I gave all students to uh, have um, um, this recording for their introduction. So as an uh, option. Uh, interestingly enough, there I I just finished one week, week one, and one student did uh, walk uh, used walk wire and introduced herself, and 24 students did. So you know, I mean, that's an option. So I don't know, but the uh, the mini projects, the two, they have to use it. Um, usually, the first first time they're kind of freaked out, and I don't know how to use it, and blah blah. There are a lot of um, um, talking going on. But at, I mean, whenever I did it, this is my uh, third time. Whenever they did the project, that they really enjoyed it. They want actually a uh, couple of students. I want to have all the discussion forums as um, interaction, you know, like a recording. So um, the the downside of this. Um, um, pedagogies, uh, the, uh, the faculty's uh, workload is so, um, I mean, from students' side, it's easy to use and um, not time consuming, but from a faculty standpoint, it's very time consuming. So I'm working with Heya to um, uh, to look at some different options, um, the same um, pedagogy, but from a, a faculty standpoint, it's um, less time consuming. So that's what I'm working on now. So uh, that's the innovation I made. Um, whenever I think about innovation, that's how I, um, this is how I see it, and this is my last. I think I'm timing is. Uh, sorry, this this pad, I'm not used to this. Well, that's um, one of the things that impresses me is the diversity in the 
um, a lot of different um, things you've used mm -hmm. to incorporate into this. Um, right. I, I think students like this uh, diversity. I think mean, the different types of uh, activities, mm -hmm. not only discussion groups, but there is some peer review. There is some um, little uh, circle that they can engage each other and you know producing something. Um, and, and they think, that, oh, I accomplished something. I thought in the online learning environment, I never, I, I would imagine to this kind of uh, presentation, but they like the fact that they have that opportunity. So I think, um, I think well we see. So, yeah, yeah. I think uh, there is a lack of challenge that the students do the surveys, mm -hmm. um, but I think this is a great idea to to encourage them to do the surveys. Right, survey. What the way that so as I said is of uh, the first um. Uh, anonymous, this uh, multimedia project, I didn't give um, any extra points, anything for survey, but usually I always give extra point one, extra point for midterm. I always do midterm uh, evaluation. Also final evaluation comes from you know, university, so that has, you know, but usually students at the end of semester, they want to just finish and they want to go, right? They don't want to do evaluation. The way that I encourage students for final evaluation if the whole a class, 8% and above, they as a group, they have they participate in the uh, a final, a final evaluation, then they get, everybody get, got one extra point. So that's how two extra points for it. But I consider evaluation most important. I mean, because that's where I get students' feedback and I can change my uh, instruction. So sometimes we say, well, uh, you know, instruction starts with assessment, but I always say, well, I don't agree. I think it starts with evaluation. <laughs> it's like, why, why always put evaluation at the end? Why don't you evaluate what they, you know, and then we can start, you know, the um, changes, innovations, so. So how do you give them extra point if it's anonymous? Oh, so what they do is I use SurveyMonkey. Uh, no, SurveyMonkey. The core tricks, our school uses the core tricks. That's a kind of SurveyMonkey, so I make, um, uh, I made a, a quick a survey link, and then I give this uh, uh, the link to students. And uh, after they finish it, they have to come to Sakai, and I made a, a link that okay, I, I completed it. You know, it's the honest system. They did it, and I give one point. So that's how do how I do for midterm and for uh, final evaluation. That's easy because uh, the university sends all this uh, the uh, statistics. It's, um, how many percent students completed um, the final evaluation? So when I see eighty percent completion, yes, yes, you made it, and I give I give all one point to all students. So students like that too. Kind of game, kind of gamey, but uh, students like this competition and get this extra points. So that's how you put so it. So don't know who did it, but just because of the statistics. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't want to know who, who said what. <laughs> really, sometimes one of our students you know by the evaluation some. Very mean students. Sometimes students don't like what faculty wear, which color. So it's a very, you know, anonymous. It's very. Uh, it can be tricky. Students can vent sometimes. That's kind of. Um, that's why I'm very interested in this uh, civility, cyber civility studies. So I'm, I'm, that's my study area. But um, at this point, it's anonymous. Um, it's an honest system. And but what I like is to gather all the information that I can improve my instruction. Also, give the name of that software used to create that animation. Animation, I think, is normal. 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 And, 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 and yeah, yeah. If it was different name, I think now extra it's extra normal. Right. It was extra normal, but now it's normal. Yeah. Yeah. You can subscribe. Uh, I think it's even monthly. I did. I just uh, had some um, all a lot of a lot of presentation <coughs> going on. So what I did, I just one month subscription, and I, I just. Put my time. Okay, this month I'm going to use maximize the <laughs> use, and then you know that's how I did. It. So it worked. Okay, yeah. Another question: We have some JavaScript. We have some conflicts to to use the JavaScript in our Sakai, but I just saw some use that. Oh um, no, I didn't have any um conflict with the uh, JavaScript. No. Well, thank you so much. We finished on time, so we didn't have to hassle you. And if anyone's got any questions, they can hang around and talk to sure. you. Sure. Yeah, I'll hang around here a little bit. So thank, thank you so you. much for coming. Excellent. <laughs>